So I really like the subject of air masses. Um, they're kind of intuitive, and um, we're going to see that air masses, they kind of hang around uh, a particular what we call source region for a while, and they pick up characteristics of the temperature and the moisture of what we call that source region. Oops. So here's a big chunk of air we call an air mass, and it has kind of a, a uniform or same temperature and moisture at different elevations. Um, at a, excuse me, at a particular horizontal layer, we'll have the same temperature and moisture. So that's air mass A, and you know, in the northern hemisphere, that could be kind of cold and it might be dry. We're going to talk about that type of air mass. And then in the northern hemisphere, we might have something warm and moist down here a different air mass, and we'll call that air mass B. So I mentioned um, source regions, and I'll get to that here in a minute, but for instance, um, this is showing a warm and moist air mass was on the move. It maybe came from the Gulf or from the um, be the Pacific Ocean and moved in over Arizona. And since it's warm and moist, since it's warm, it has a tendency to want to rise. Warm air wants to rise. And since it's moist, it has a tendency to perhaps bring precipitation. So there you go. That's a warm, moist air mass on the move. Now, switching gears, think uh, north. Think Canada um, inland so it's dry and actually this is a cold dry air mass that is just hanging out over Canada. So an air mass is a big chunk of air and it has uniform conditions um, and the most uh, the most thing we're likely to measure and say is uniform within a, an air mass is its general temperature hot or cold and its general moisture um, uh, moist, which means there's lots of uh, water or dry, the absence of water. Another thing, though, we can uh, differentiate between air masses, it kind of related to moisture and temperature, would be the, the atmospheric pressure within air mass. Um, and I mentioned that it's uniform. It's uniform uh, horizontally. So, for instance, if this is my Earth's surface, and I'll kind of mention this again in a minute, and this is my air mass. Here's my air mass. We're kind of looking at it edge on. Okay, uh, when I say it's uniform horizontally, especially with temperature and moisture, this layer would have all the same moisture and temperature, and this layer would have all the same moisture and temperature. See how that works? Uh, but if you go up vertically, it could change. Um, so there you go, air masses. Now, in the next chapter, I really like the next chapter, too, because we're going to talk about where air masses meet. Now, a little bit ago, I kind of drew an air mass A. I'll go ahead and draw air mass A again. And an air mass B. We said A might be uh, cold and dry, and B might be warm and moist. Now, where these air masses meet, these chunks of air meet, now I'm kind of looking at a bird's eye view again. This is what we call the front. And my front looks like it's got some gaps in it, but... If you're a visual person, that is our air mass front. And we'll talk more about that in the next chapter. So these source regions, how do you get a chunk of air cold and dry? Or how do you get a chunk of air warm and moist? Well, you take a chunk of air, and we're going to see that it's best if the chunk of air sits or the most likely place for an air mass to be formed is if it sits over higher latitudes, like associated with maybe the polar cell, or lower latitudes associated with maybe the Hadley cell. They got to sit there for a while because what happens is that um, as that chunk of air sits there, it's not an air mass, but it has to sit there for a while, then let me go ahead and draw my Earth's surface again. I'm looking at it um, now, not a bird's eye view, but kind of edge on. As that chunk of air sits there for a while, let's just say that that surface, the Earth's surface, is cold and let's just say there's not moist, much moisture and dry. As this is going to be my future air mass, as it sits there for a while, it goes ahead and it picks up the characteristics of what we call its source region. Source region. It's like the thing, it's like the birthing place for um, air masses, basically. <laughs>
So if the earth surface is cold and dry, it's going to cold, ultimately turn cold and dry, but it takes a little bit of while. It takes dwelling time. Makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so a source region is the land area where the mass forms, or uh, we can see that actually source regions can be large bodies of water too. It needs to be pretty large. How big? Well, um, several of the United States' large states. So, I don't know, Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, you know, maybe put those three states together and that's how big your source region needs to be. And I mentioned that kind of um, where, what makes good source regions and kind of good candidates would be uh, under kind of the, the lower latitudes, which would be kind of near the equator, or the upper latitudes associated with kind of the polar cell. All right. So an air mass has relatively uniform temperatures and moisture, most notably, and sometimes pressure. Well, kind of, I think, like I said, related to temperature and moisture, it's going to have similar pressures. Now, notice it's going to be horizontally. So if this is my air mass, this would all be the same temperature and pressure. I'm kind of looking edge on again. Okay, that's, that's the same horizontally. Notice that what that actually means is that if, if you go up vertically, we can have changes within the same air mass. Um, let's see. Air masses can either have um, a strong pressure or temperature gradient vertically, um, and they can be stable or unstable. And so now let's get to classifying air masses. So the two most likely ways to look at a chunk of air, an air mass, and to classify it will be with regard to its temperature, if it's hot or cold, and its moisture content. Is it moist or dry? So kind of like we did with the clouds, we end up coming up with these kind of two letters, in one case maybe a one letter um, abbreviation of how to describe an air mass. And there's going to be five different air masses, air mass types I'm going to show you here in a minute. But with regard to temperature, we have two choices. Actually, there's a third choice. Yep, yeah, thank you. <laughs> We have three choices with regard to temperature. It can be uh, warm, and sometimes you'll hear me call this hot, warm or hot. And we'll use the capital T, and that represents the word tropical, tropical hot. So T is regarding the temperature. Um, if it's cold, we are going to use the capital P for our polar. That makes sense, doesn't it? And if it's very cold, we are going to use the capital letter A for Arctic. So three different temperatures. So your um, air mass, we're going to say there's five different air mass types here in a minute, and they're going to have one of these letters associated with them. Well then, with regard to moisture, we have two possibilities. We have dry, and if the air mass is dry, you're going to see a lowercase c, and that's going to represent continental. And if there's a fair bit of water in your air mass, because of where it formed, your air mass is going to be moist, and we are going to use the lowercase m, that, which will stand for maritime. So if we combine those five different temperatures, oops, sorry, if we combine those three different temperatures with these two different uh, moisture contents, I'm going to show you, actually we only have five instead of six possibilities, and I'll show you, maybe explain in a minute why we don't have that sixth possibility. But starting with the dry air masses, now I know it's dry because we have a C for continental, which means their source region, where they were formed, was like over a continent, which makes them dry. So we have two uh, options for um, and I'll tell you a minute why we don't have that third one. But we have two, actually we do have a third one. We have two uh, options for temperatures. We have um, tropical, uppercase T. So continental tropical would be uh, uh, dry and warm. And then we have cold. So we use the word polar for that air mass with regard to its temperature. Continental polar would be dry and cold. Let's see what else we got. The next two, actually, are maritime um, 
maritime air masses. Maritime meaning they're moist. Okay, so if they're maritime, we use the lowercase m. We have two possibilities for temperature. We have the warm maritime, maritime tropical, warm and moist, and we have the cold maritime, maritime polar, uh, uh, cold and moist. The last one, if you're keeping track, we didn't ever address those air masses that are very cold. And if it's got a very cold temperature, we call them Arctic air masses. And actually, there's only one type of Arctic air mass, and it's a continental Arctic air mass. In fact, sometimes I've seen this type of air mass, we kind of disregard the continental part of it, and we simply call it an Arctic air mass. represented by the capital letter A. So continental Arctic air masses. Now there are no maritime Arctic air masses and the reason is is that moist air, sorry, let me try that the other way around. The reason is, the reason we don't have any maritime Arctic air masses is that very cold air represented by the letter A, they really do not hold or cannot hold moisture. So um, there are no very cold, moist air masses. Okay, so as I kind of mentioned in the next chapter, we're going to talk about fronts, actually, are the region between two air masses. Let me kind of do a bird's eye view of two kind of, I'll try to show, show kind of a, um, instead of a roundish region, let me kind of show more contact. This is the front. Okay, so this simply kind of alludes to that. Um, how do we know that we have something? How do we know we have, for instance, a uh, um, uh, let me pick one, a continental polar air mass meeting up with a maritime tropical air mass? Well, if you're here in the in the kind of the region between the two air masses, you know that if you go this way, it's going to be cold and dry, continental polar. And if you go this way, it's going to be warm and moist, maritime tropical. So actually, I mean, you as a person can actually feel the difference um, between these two air masses as they pass by.